As the protests move into a third week, politicians are scrambling to find a solution. The demonstrations sprang up across the country after police moved in to remove a blockade of construction sites for a new gas pipeline across Canada. Part of it goes over land owned by indigenous communities and some hereditary chiefs oppose the project. When the camps were moved, copycat protests began near vital rail lines. Now a coalition of Canadian businesses is warning of the long-term economic impact. Rail is the way about half of all goods move in Canada. And so every day that we're not moving the materials and parts, uh, ingredients, either to consumers, but more importantly, to, in our point of view from manufacturers, uh, we're starting to, the economy will start to slow down. Food supplies have been blocked because trains aren't running. There's a shortage of propane gas essential in a bitter Canadian winter. People haven't felt the impact yet, but they're about to. It's estimated that the rail crisis has cost the Canadian economy somewhere in the region of $5 billion. There's talk of a possible settlement by the weekend, but at the moment, that's more in hope than expectation. Many native communities support the pipeline for the economic benefits it'll bring. There's also widespread public support for the protests. One energy expert says he's worried the concerns of some in the native communities have been hijacked. Attacking this particular pipeline makes absolutely no sense by any objective measure. And for those who are using this as a means to achieve other, uh, other political agenda, uh, I think we should leave that for other days. Already more than a thousand workers have been told they're going to be laid off, mainly in the rail industry. But if there's no solution, that might start to spread. The protesters haven't said much in the past few days, but their message is echoing across Canada. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Toronto.